friends, to a very special episode of KaluujCast. I'm Matt Schroyer, and as usual, I'm here with my good friend and project car, the BMW Z3 Roadster. I took a bit of a hiatus because of, uh... <laughs> all that stuff. But I'm back now, and I decided to uh, make a few changes to the channel, perhaps uh, change the name to... Uh, Kludgecast from Kludgecast, because a very smart person with a PhD in words told me that kludge actually pertains to uh, the toilet and things that go in the toilet. And I mean no disrespect to the great invention of the toilet or the fine people who make those things work. Uh, in fact, that's a lot more useful than the <coughs> I do in this garage. This person also informed me I probably meant the word kludge, which is a uh, assemblage of parts that are just kind of thrown together. And yeah, that's kind of more what this channel is about. So again, welcome to KludgeCast. Uh, I wanted to talk about something that is very common on BMWs of this vintage. And that is that over time, they tend to generate a, a slow leak from the power steering system. When that begins to happen, you have, you have two options. One is to replace all the hoses with uh, OEM parts and uh, that's good, except it seems that after a couple years, the problems seem to just kind of crop back. Or two, you can totally do away with those OEM lines and go with a more robust custom system. Like this replacement from Chase Bays, which uses a revised power steering reservoir and AM Army Navy type uh, fittings and hoses. Now that all sounds good and fine, except this Chase Bays replacement costs twice as much as an OEM replacement. But this is not a uh, financial responsibility seminar, and please do not come to me for financial advice. So a while ago, I purchased the uh, Chase Bays uh, E46 power steering uh, upgrade kit with the optional uh, aluminum power steering fluid cooler and install it on the Z3. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through how the stock power steering system works. Then I'll show you what comes in the kit, remove the old system, install the new system, and once that's all put together, fill the system and then go through the steps of, of how to bleed it. And then I'll let you know if, uh, if I believe it was worth it or not. Just one final note um, on this video, um, I installed this kit in the middle of a substantial front end suspension uh, rebuild. So you'll notice a lot of parts are just kind of disassembled. I promise you won't need to tear apart your uh, front suspension to get this thing installed. With that out of the way, I will show you how the stock power steering system on this car is routed and uh, then show you what's in the kit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and trace for you the routing of the stock power steering system so you'll get a better idea of how everything's supposed to line up. Here's your uh, old fashioned power steering reservoir. There is a fat line which goes all the way down under the car. And so that line goes all the way to the bottom here, down to the power steering pump. And this is where it's actually, I think, leaking the most. I think this is the most troublesome part of the whole contraption. Now the other end sticking out of the power steering pump is right there. And that goes into the top of the power steering rack. This line that kind of loops around and goes into the top. The bottom line here, let me grab it. This bottom line goes to the uh, coolant circuit, which is in the front here, just in front of the radiator. And it spits back out at this line here, which then goes back up into the power steering reservoir to complete the circuit and start it all over again. So that's the original circuit for this car. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of this uh, Chase Bay's power steering kit. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, start with the, uh, the fat pipe here. This fat pipe is gonna connect to the fat end of the power steering reservoir. From there, it's gonna connect to the power steering pump with that clamp at the end. This line here is going to go from the uh, other end of the power steering pump uh, into the top end of the power steering rack. This line goes from the bottom of the power steering rack into the power steering fluid cooler, which is uh, an add-on for I think about $100. So that will go into one end, probably this end closest to the rack itself. Then the other end of the 
cooler will attach to one end of, uh, I believe it's that end of the long line, which will then loop around back into the bottom of the power steering fluid reservoir. And also it comes with uh, some hardware. We've got some clamps here to hold it to the, uh, to the steering rack. However, there is only uh, one eyelet in the power steering rack to actually mount this. So I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of bracket to make sure that both ends are secure and not just one. Finally, there is a little adapter here meant for the reservoir. So that being said, let's go ahead and install it. It was at this point that I ran into some trouble. It seems that BMW decided to be difficult, like it always does, and picked a specific Bosch power steering pump only for the six cylinder non-M Roadster. And the connection for that high pressure line out of the pump is very different than the E46. So the power steering pump AN fitting didn't fit well enough uh, in the rack and frustratingly, even though I spent more than $400 on the system, Chase Bays wouldn't even offer an exchange for the correct fitting. So that's a point against Chase Bays. The correct fitting for this application turned out to be a 16 millimeter by 1.5 threaded male power steering adapter with O-ring to fit a dash six AN line. With the stock power steering cooling circuit gone, it was time to fabricate a bracket out of an aluminum bar that would help to hold the power steering cooler in front of the power steering rack. And now I'm starting to realize why there isn't a bespoke power steering replacement for the Z3.
One trick I like to do with my brackets is to double up on the aluminum bars with rivets and then thread a helicoil insert into the bar. And what that does is it allows you to fasten parts directly into the bracket instead of having to use something like a backing bolt. And this can make assembly a whole lot easier. With everything bolted up, it was time to fill up the system. No fancy synthetic power steering fluid, no stop leak, just good old plain DEX 3 ATF filled halfway up the reservoir. It needed to be properly bled. The safest way to do this is to make sure the car is up on jack stands so that the wheels can turn freely. With the car off, prime the system by rotating the wheel to lock and back five times and refill the reservoir back to halfway if necessary. Now only after you've primed the system should you fire the engine and let the pump run. After about three to five minutes at idle, turn the wheel to lock and back another five times. The fluid should be getting a little foamy at this point. So go ahead and check the fluid levels again and refill if necessary. Then shut off the car, put it on the ground and take it out for a spin. I noticed a little noise at first, but the pump quieted down after about five minutes of driving. So I assume that was the system burping out the last bits of air. After you let the car sit overnight, and the next time you take the car out, go ahead and check the reservoir again. You shouldn't be seeing any more foamy ATF, and if you do still see foam, you might have a leak. So go ahead and check your connections for leaks, and repeat the bleeding process if necessary. So that's all there is to the system. Uh, what are my impressions of it? Well, it, it is a chunk of money. Um, but everything seems to be good quality and uh, looks like it would last much longer than the uh, OEM system would. And if for whatever reason the fittings of those lines uh, begin to weep, um, now that they are AN standard, um, I expect it would be actually be a little cheaper for me to go ahead and find replacements for those fittings and hoses now that they're all on this AN standard. On the other hand, I feel kind of let down by the Chase Bay's uh, customer service department. Um, I realized this was not the original application for the E46 power steering kit, um, but for $420, I would expect that uh, they would go ahead and uh, be cool with letting me exchange one fitting for another to fit this car. That's the joys of custom life. <laughs> He's already dead. Is it worth it after all that? If you're planning to keep your car through the ravages of time until it turns to dust and the inevitable heat death of the universe, sure, why not blow that money? However, if you're just trying to get the car down the road, and aren't planning to keep it longer than maybe five years, then go ahead and go with the OEM system. Um, just make sure you go through a place like FCP Euro. And the reason why I say that is FCP Euro uh, offers an exchange program if one of their parts wears out. So go ahead and take advantage of that and remember to keep them receipts. I wanna see the receipts. So that's all for now. I wanna thank you for watching and we'll see you down the road.